everybody. Can you believe it's a year since we were last in Holly's beautiful kitchen making our now famous stir up Sunday cake. Do you remember to make it later on this month? Oh actually no it'd be November and if you've lost the recipe you can contact us and we can send it to you. But however as we are really looking forward to all the exciting things that are coming up in the lead up to Christmas we thought why don't we do another cake? So I set my good friend Polly the challenge. What cake can we do this year? And Polly is going to explain that very cake. This year I'm going to make a coconut and pineapple cake and it's been inspired by some of the ladies in the village that I see regularly for a shopping outing. They go on the people's place That's bus right. and we have a cup of tea at the end of the shopping trip and one of them asked me about three or four weeks ago, did I have a recipe from a, they thought was from a Mrs. Beaton's book. Oh, so a classic, classic. A classic, classic. Um, which I don't, but could I look on the internet for, for a recipe? So I had a quick look, couldn't find anything. Found quite a lot of, um, it was a coconut and pineapple cake that their Ooh. mum used to make. And it was made with crushed tin pineapple, which I've only ever yes. by mistake before, <laughs> but never actually thought about what to use it for. And, I put a look, I had a look online, found a lot of American recipes. But no Mrs. Beaton. No Mrs. Beaton, yeah, couldn't right. find that. Um, so I then put a call out to a Facebook group that I'm part of, which is for Argus. Oh my word, we're so 21st century, yes, we aren't are. we? <laughs> and a lady replied who is an Argus demonstrator, she's a very knowledgeable cook, and said actually try a Jamie Oliver recipe. Oh, we love Jamie. Oh we yes, yeah, yes. We do. should so be a good one. I, so I've had a couple of goes at making Looking this cake. And when I made it for the sort of first time, I was really surprised at the quantities mm. because if you bake cakes quite often, you think, oh, that's the, the amount of sugar to eggs and so not very much flour, but you, you make it up with the coconut, the coconut, the coconut is a, a and it's, it's made with some sour cream as well. Ooh. Gives it a really light texture. It's really nice on the day it's cooked. And I felt that when what I happens the next two days, even better or not so good? No, it was really lovely. But I think the next few days, it works well as a pudding. I think we had it custard. It's a multitasking yeah, sweet. So it's a very, very light little cake, but the reason we're just doing this this year is to remind you all about Stir Up Sunday and that the cake recipe from last year's online. It so is, anyway, it I'm is, gonna, yes. I'm going to get started and Fiona's going to talk through a few things that I'm going to do. Well, this is the exciting bit, isn't it? Because I watch lots of cookery programmes, okay. but here I am telling you, if you can't guess yourself, what Polly's going to do. She was explaining to me earlier, quite often when she was doing this, she would actually use an electrical whisk, but we know you'd rather hear us talking. So we're not using an electrical whisk, just so that we can keep right. making the video, but please do, or even, you know, I now have a trusted kitchen aid, or whatever your favorite thing is to make cakes, you can use that. But we're using an old fashioned way, even though it's not a Mrs. Beaton, it is a Jamie Oliver cake. And I remember him when he was just a wee lad. Right, what we got here, okay. Polly? Um, we have two eggs. We have, so the recipe is over there. So we have 110 grams of unsalted Salted butter. butter. Yeah. We have 110 grams of cast sugar. Two large eggs, which I will beat first. We have 250 ml of sour cream. Uh, 200 grams of self-raising flour and some bicarb of soda. The magic ingredient. Pineapple and coconut. Wow. Also, the other thing when I, when I actually read the recipe, I've, I've always put, it says, beat the butter and sugar together. Yes, that's a classic one, isn't yeah. it? And, and then beat your eggs in. Beat your eggs in, but I like to put flour in first because I think sometimes it's split. But uh, I, so it's I, always the tip, I isn't had it? to yeah. be really careful and you could see it was going to do that. So when you put the eggs in, be really and careful. And do you know, viewers, what splitting cakes do? It actually, um, as far as I remember, it, it lowers the density. It makes the cake not so light. So that's why it's really important not to split. But it's a technique in itself. Do you know, I, I've improved my cake making. Um, Rosie still beat me this year in the recipe cake. Well done, Rosie. But my cake making has improved by using the kitchen aid, and I always use the all-in-one method, right? So that's my personal tip. But Polly here is going with your classic cream your butter and sugar, first of all. Polly has actually softened the butter, which is a really good tip. Uh, never, never try cream butter that isn't softened. You'll be here for hours and the cup of tea will get cold. Yeah. Uh, don't want that. Do I've it. had it sitting on the aisle for about an hour. Uh, yeah, oh my word, it's really soft. It's really soft. So, 
So once we've creamed... You've creamed. Do you get on with a KitchenAid? Because I have a KitchenAid. Oh, we have a deep, meaningful yeah, relationship with oh, a KitchenAid. Oh. I can make bread now. Oh, I like the KitchenAid. Do you? Yes, I do. It's see, changed I, my baking. See, I haven't got on with it. I've gone back to classical. So anyway, that's oh. us talking about That's kitchens. why we are so Friends. complimentary to each other. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, what happens next? So we have two so, beaten eggs. Beaten the eggs, which again is another tip when you're adding eggs to any cake mixture, isn't it? Very gently added in there. Added in. Oh, lovely bowls, lovely bowls. Yes, yeah. what happens next? Okay, so then we put in. And then we put the sour, sour cream, cream in. in. And then right. it says, beat gently. So this was. Do you want your whisk again? Yes, please. Right. Whisk Glamorous is coming assistant, yes. Uh, I have many uses. One of them is passing things. So here we go. I'm passing the whisk okay. to Polly, who's making the cake. Now, as Polly says, at this stage, right, it's worth just taking your time. So don't be making this cake when you've only got five minutes. You've got to rush out the door. This is a cake to be made when you have a little bit of time and you want to enjoy making. Is that right, Polly? It is, yeah. I think you just, you really have to take your time with that. And then, really have to space for the bowls. Really <laughs> well, they get all messy. Uh, so how much bicarb? So it's a quarter or baking. of... baking. Sorry, it's baking. It's bicarbonate of soda. All oh, right. Yes. So, Recipes vary with that, don't yeah. they? Never quite. I know that um, anybody wants fun with the children when you add that to melted sugar and twinkle, it bubbles up, making the old honeycomb like you get in the middle of crunches. Oh, I know so that because my kitchen was covered with that last week when Sophia made it. So speaking from bitter experience. Right, so Polly, so you're, you're sifting. sifting. So I, I always like to get a little bit of air in. Very make important, sure isn't it? Make as sure well. lumps, no lumps. Yeah. Makes a much better texture with the cake if you've sieved the flour in, definitely. So here we are, still using the whisk, you can see. And, and actually it, for yeah. this, when, I, when I've made it before, I have done this by hand. I would always cream the butter and sugar with an electric whisk, but because of the way I was mixing the sour cream in, I found the balloon whisk. It's yeah, it's really one. gentle. So that's coming together. If every, uh, viewers can't see probably, they may appreciate it. Look at the... Slightly so, claggy at the moment. Yeah, but it's but you, you can, can tell sure it's combining them. nicely. The trouble when you're making cakes, it just make you feel hungry, doesn't it? It's a good job. There's a good finished result. Yes. Now I have tried um, a variation of this. Um, I've put and it's the coconut and pineapple, the last thing. Yes, so um, those things in. So say it's a lot of coconut. Ooh. So I was a bit alarmed when I first made it. Uh, what is it again? 150 grams. 150 grams 150 of coconut. Grams. Don't worry, we'll we should the recipe. But... We should. I think, should we put it in the lich gate for December, maybe? Oh, so I bet you can't December. wait already. So, or else we'll email it out or we'll put it on the end of the video. So then I'm just going to take a oh. little bit more juice. I have strained this a couple of times. They don't want it too, too wet. wet. They don't want the juice. There you go. And how much pineapple, Polly? Was so it? that's 200 grams of crushed pineapple from a tin and strained about an hour ago and I still managed to get some more liquid off there I think you just need it. it's got a beautiful smell it's got that kind of holiday cocktail smell is it, is it yes oh, well because it's slightly pina colada isn't it, is, it? Yes. if you were being very tongue-in-cheek you could call it the pina colada cake I guess so the reason why I actually my eyes was like oh ooh, coconut cake when, when the ladies asked me is one of the first things when I left home my mummy made me sit down and write out a few recipes. Ah. And the first cake I ever baked when I left home was a cherry and coconut cake. And I still, oh, it has a special it meaning. It does, and I thought, so I have made it once with some cherries in, mm -hmm. but they've sunk. Unlike the cherry and coconut loaf that I make, I don't know if it's to do with the pineapple and the acidity, but it didn't no, no. really work. So I've tried a few times, but it Paul Hollywell always says fruit sinks, doesn't it? Because if the texture of the cake is, is too yeah. loose, apparently. I'm quoting from my sad many times of watching Bake Off. Right, Polly, is that, is that all that's we have to do? That is it. It's a very, wow. very easy cake. So, mixture. And what kind of tin now, Polly? So, that's always really important. It's like, did you see Polly's got lying or in these crinkly efforts? So you can line it with paper. You could just grease it like a normal cake. I quite like the liners, you know. Very um, good. I'm, are they from Lakeland or somewhere like that? We're not pushing them, we're just saying if you want to I think, get them. I think you can get them from most places. John Lewis. Oh, they, they um, Lakeland, Amazon, probably. Yeah, Lakeland, yeah. yeah. There we are. 
happy than my kind of weird head of neatness. So I like them. I can see while you're making this why it can also be a pudding. Yeah, yeah I say it is a multitasking cake. It's so something lovely when it's while fresh, it's hot as well. Yeah, when it's, it's really fresh, nice. it's going to be a cakey, but then it's it's going to kind of metamorphize. Rather clever of it, isn't it? Into a, a cake. So very very simple. As I say I did question the the quantities, and but it's actually it's a really lovely cake and just something different to do. This is going to go into, I'm going oh, to do it in a go. traditional fan oven this time. I'm not going to do it in the arbor. So uh, preheated the fan oven for 170 and it will go in between an hour and an hour and 15 minutes. Equally, I've done it in the arbor in the baking oven, which it didn't get quite as much of a rise, um, but that was the baking oven for a similar amount of time. So, so the, does the rise come up to the paper here, does it? It, it actually domed above. Quite a bit and what colour does it look? It's a very brown... Cake, yeah, it's it's kind of a dark golden brown. It gold, that's the word we're looking for. Golden, golden. Yes. And then golden it says cake. once you take it out of the tin, leave it to cool, sprinkle some icing sugar over the top, and, and eat, and eat, and eat, and eat with a lovely cup of tea. So, so everybody, so I'm going to put that in the oven while you sort of make some more announcements. I will, yes, I will. So there you are. We will be putting the recipe in for you. We do hope that you have time to make your own stir up Sunday cake. But a little plug is we are at Breakfast Cafe on Sunday the 28th of November. Junior Choir will be singing their Stir Up Sunday song along with a couple of other teasers for this year's Nativity, which is also on the 19th of December, Sunday, and the same day also as our beautiful carol service. Uh, another thing we were asked just to mention for you is coming up on Saturday the 13th of November, there is a Come and Sing Rutter and Good all beautiful anthems. They're being sung and rehearsed in a workshop in the afternoon, but there is an informal concert at six o'clock, which is open to everybody. There is no fee for tickets, just a little bit retiring collection if you have anything, but you could come along and get your first real taste of Christmas type music. So do come along to that. And finally, we want to tell you about our grand Christmas raffle. You will have seen in the Lich Gate uh, the tickets are in there, there's going to be some announcements about the different prizes that keep coming in. We thought it would be lovely, not having been able to hold the fate for the last two years, was to have a little raffle so everybody around here could have a go and hopefully win some super prizes. And probably one of those prizes will be a homemade cake, hint. So, how could you resist? Polly. Um, it was more just come along to Stir Up Sunday at the cafe. What date's the cafe? On November, the 28th of November. November yeah. So that you can all have a stir of the Christmas cake mixture, which you didn't get to do last year, and all the children can help me make it. I know, and then we'll eat it at Nativity. Yes. What could be better? Well, take care all. Take care. Bye bye. bye. ourselves for about the last hour while the beautiful cake has been cooking and I must tell you one of the loveliest things about making this cake is the fact that it starts to fill the room with the most wonderful aroma. Here in the production kitchen we're actually really excited about getting the cake out because it it's smells so nice. nice. Oh my word, so Polly, right remember always when you're getting cakes out of the oven it is hot even if we've been doing it for years be very careful. But I'm looking forward to seeing this one. <gasps> oh, and here she comes. Oh, great technique, Polly. <laughs> there we go. Look at this beauty. Ooh, smells lovely. So golden brown. Let's have a look, see if it's... That's, yeah, ooh. So you can see, as Polly was describing earlier, there is a texture slightly crispy on the top. Slightly yeah. crispy, a lovely... So, and she's doing the... 
And yeah. it's coming clean. Yeah, everywhere. Beautifully baked cake, there we are. And that one only really took an hour, didn't it? Yes, it's just yeah, so do hour. look after about an hour. And normally I'd leave it for sort of five, ten minutes to cool down in the tin, but I'm going to take it out this time. I'm just going to uh, put it on the cooling It's quite room. exciting having a production kitchen here in Waltham St Lawrence, isn't it? You know, we really enjoy like making these things. things. Well, I, I like having a production kitchen. This is a good technique, everybody. Look at that. Yes, that's a classic easy way to take off something hot and as we were saying earlier you can see this lovely liner are you all right there polly i'm not yep. interfering as usual nope. and that That's lovely it. liner actually enables polly to release off the base and voila here so we have probably too hot but the last bit of the recipe says a little dusting of icing sugar oh there we go there we are just finishing it off and probably like us, you're looking forward to having a slice now. Yeah. There you go. That's, I think the cameraman is looking forward to a slice. He's beaming. <laughs> <laughs> well so, done, Polly. So have a lovely autumn season and uh, we should all catch up with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.